In general, I want to thank you for being you. Uh, whether it just be uh, living your life as a shining example of what you and your community and your culture can contribute to the city's landscape, or just being a, a tireless uh, worker for the rights of others and social justice. Oftentimes, I know it feels like a thankless job, and so let me take the opportunity to thank you. All right. So here, and before I jump into what I have to say about the Our City, Our Plan initiative, I kind of want to take the time to address the elephant in the room, the kind of storm outside is brewing. And by storm, I mean uh, Hurricane Trump. Um, it's a little unnerving what's going on right now. Things feel kind of uncertain up in the air. Uh, a little scary for those of us invested in freedom and love. Uh, for those of us who have aspirations and visions for the future. And so I asked you a question, it's a rhetorical question. Um, when you go to sleep at night, you, you turn on CNN or you, maybe you scroll through social media and you see some of the crazy things that are being actually implemented, some things are being said. What, what's for certain? When you wake up and you say, like, I know for certain that this is going to happen or this isn't going to happen. I mean, are, are we safe? Uh, is it going to be in America as we know it in four years? I, I don't even tell me. Uh, is, is the president a Russian spot? Uh, was there a Russian nuclear uh, submarine off the coast of Connecticut a couple weeks ago? You tell me. What about the environment, the planet? Is that going to be intact, at least as we know it, in the next four years? You tell me. I don't. Did we just run an oil pipeline through sacred land that spilled 170,000 plus gallons just the other day? Did uh, Mr. Trump uh, appoint uh, an adamant uh, EPA hater uh, to be in charge of the Environmental Protection Agency? Uh, did that happen? The, the agency actually in charge of protecting the environment? What about education? How we feel about uh, Betsy DeVos? Uh, I, I'm, I'm not the uh, hugest public schools advocate. It hasn't necessarily done my community what it should, but we need public schools. Right? And I, I don't feel comfortable about being in the land where you have to take out loans to go to elementary school. Uh, I'm not sure that that's not going to happen. Can you say that? What about your day-to-day -day life? When you wake up and you go outside your house, race war, are we not going to have a race war? Can you say that for certain? I mean, did he surround himself with white supremacists? Blatantly, openly? Uh, is he investing billions of dollars in building a wall to keep our brown neighbors up, the community? Uh, some of these folks that have married into your family, some of your favorite groups, some of your co-workers, your, co your classmates, uh, your neighbors, are they going to be there a couple of weeks from now, a month from now, four years from now? I know he had this, uh, he implemented this, this ban or this deportation date that was only supposed to be for murderers and rapists, and the next thing you know, it seemed like people who had parking tickets are being reported. So I asked him again, what's for certain? And what can we do about that? What can we do about this? Nothing. It's not quite the answer you expected. There's nothing we can do on a national level directly. What we can do, what we must do, is organize and rally locally. All politics are local, and it's never been more true than this moment. And so what we have here, and what we currently have here, is a local landscape where you have uh, a pathetic Trump wannabe and Michael Gaffney uh, posturing against the dime store Hillary Clinton and Joseph Petty. So you have someone who wants to continue and push forward the agenda that uh, Mr. Trump is pushing forward and hate and, and, and division and money over people. And you have the ultimate system status quo. And Mr. Petty who would like things to keep continuing going which way it's going. But I'll tell you what we need is, we need a better option. Right? And, and that's us, right? This is a diverse city. And we owe it to our neighbors and the people who make up this city for years to make sure that they're safe. So first, first and foremost, this needs to be a sanctuary city. Out and up front, official on the record, we need to be a sanctuary city. No gamesmanship, we need to be a sanctuary city. As a descendant of enslaved Africans, I understand the importance of having a point of safety in an unsafe land. In this city here, as Worcester progresses and grows, we have a responsibility to make sure that it grows and includes the Worcester residents. Not just the transplants, not just the visitors, not just the people looking to do business here, to make sure that Worcester stays for Worcester rights. Just blocks from here. You drove in here, you see what this neighborhood looks like. There's rent ranging from $1,800 to $2,600. K 
Can nobody afford that here? You have million dollar construction projects all through the city. I've been in the city a long time for, since 88. I've been dying for what's gonna look like a city. And it's starting to look like it. it looks good, except on these construction projects here, how many of those paychecks are landing at Worcester addresses? I mean, I thought it was until we just had the carpenters out here yesterday, or uh, well, two days ago, protest. You have uh, Mariano and his cronies and his gangsters implementing prison-like policies out in Greybrook Valley to put the pressure on the residents. Hopefully they'll move out and capitulate and relate to, that, uh, to the pressure and vacate those premises. Uh, maybe the UMass medical students can move in there. And, uh, and, and, and this is continuous uh, oppressive policies here in Worcester. And we need to make sure that Worcester stays for Worcester rights. Because I'm making a personal plea, right? I'm also making a community plea, but I'm sorry for personally. I need help doing this. I came to these brothers here, I came to this brother here, and they, they believe in me, and they also see interest and value for themselves. Whatever your, whatever your interest is, whatever your, work, whatever your work is, whatever's important to you, trust me, it is not going to be employed, it's not going to be insured by the status quo. It is further in danger if Mr. Gaffney gets his hands uh, uh, where, where he'd like to be. We can continue to protest, we continue to jump in the streets and ask the people to stop doing what, they, what, they, what they're doing. It's benefiting them. One of the most maddening things I've ever said, ever had to deal with, is this, like this nonsensical game of educating people who are well educated on what they're doing. The policies are in place for a reason. So we, I've been a part of, uh, of, of, of uh, campaigns that will go to Beacon Hill and to these politicians and say, "Well, don't you know?" If you invested that money that you invested in prison and schools, you wouldn't, they know what they're doing. They are making millions of dollars. And I tell you to, the, to, the, to my, my fellow immigrants who are now in danger, the, look, at the, look at this NASDAQ, look at the stock exchange. The private prisons are through a roof because they can't build them fast enough for the deportees. I know we have a variation in this room here. Mr. Thomas said here he didn't understand why people who had this aversion of money. I do. I, I, I was a, a devout capitalist. I'm no longer a capitalist. Right? Capitalism is dependent upon people, uh, classes, and people being on the bottom. However, it is currently the economic system that we're in, and we need to master it till we get to the power, and we can uh, create a, a more comparable, a more of, uh, accommodating uh, economy. Right? We need to, uh, my enemy's enemy is my friend. We may not be all on the same page. I can guarantee we're not on the same page. But we have more in common than we have in difference. But the one thing that I'm going to borrow from Bill Belichick is he has this model that says, do your job. And keep that in mind when we go out in the community and organize. Don't think about the 17,000 that we need. Think about just when you wake up every day, you talk to your people that you convene with, that you, that you eat with, that you pray with, that you meditate with, that you, that you play with, that you dance with. Hey, do me a favor. Register, man. Or, or miss. This is what we're talking about. This is what we're doing. Take this on for you. Take this off for the person that you care about that can't do something. All right? Let's get to it. <laughs>